Wow, good morning. What an amazing interest in our day. And thank you so much for being here. I think with all the professors and doctors here, the last time someone with a title had this much interest was in the days that Dr. Kumalo played for Morocco Swallows. Um, or maybe for the millennials, uh, Dr. Elbon had a concert, or for the tech nodes, Dr. Dre. Um, thank you so much for joining us as we host this very exciting future-oriented perspective on South Africa in 2016. My name is Monet Moster. I'm the director of the Institute for Futures Research at the University of Stellenbosch, and we're very proud to host this event with the University of Stellenbosch Business School. The Institute for Futures Research uh, was the first institute of its kind to, on the African continent, examine long-range futures. And we remain the only institute on the entire continent that um, offers these kinds of long-range perspectives, in addition to offering, together with USB, um, a postgraduate diploma in future studies and a master's degree in future studies. USB, of course, is now renowned as, as one of the foremost business schools on the continent. Um, we know that it has three international accreditations, the so-called Triple Crown, and it was the first business school from an African university to achieve this, uh, and it's the only business school on the African continent with the highest level of accreditation from Equus, namely a five-year accreditation. The business school has been around since 1964, and um, it really has evolved in very innovative ways beyond uh, an MBA to now do uh, 13 business degrees and postgraduate diplomas. It's African-focused. We hope to develop responsible leaders, and we're so excited that you're joining us for this very important day today. Thank you very much, Mornay, and good morning to all of you. It's not pleasant being an economist these days, if it ever has been, but these days particularly so because the stories we have to tell these days tend to make people rather unhappy. If you try to put a positive spin on something, it makes them rather skeptical. So what I'll try to do is make a compromise here. I'll make you unhappy and skeptical. I'm going to start off by looking at some of the negative exogenous factors, external factors, which are fairly well known to you. So just a few thoughts on the global environment. This year, global growth is expected to be a little bit better than last year. But at the same time, over the last year or so, forecasts for this year are being gradually downgraded. It's going to be slower than initially expected or even hoped. In this global environment, and perhaps more importantly for countries like South Africa, is we are looking at a very important recalibration of the global economy. Things have changed in terms of the global economic architecture since five or six years ago. And there are four points in particular that are relevant to most countries, not least of which South Africa. The emerging economies. What's happening here? Very interestingly, we find that the gap between economic growth in the high-income economies, that's in red, and the developing economies in orange, that gap is getting narrower. So we are, we are seeing a convergence of economic growth, as we can see there. That all translates into a much slower and lower demand for commodities as we have seen over the last number of years. China, of course, is a particularly important story. And the context, context is important. Everyone is rightly so concerned about the Chinese growth rate dropping below 7%. Most countries would give their back teeth for a growth rate of 7%. But from where they're coming from, 10% plus for three decades, this is indeed a major occurrence for them and for the rest of us. So optimists are talking about the transition to a new normal, and one day, a more stable normal. But that will be accompanied by somewhat lower growth rates compared to what they and we have become accustomed to. So the bottom line so far is that on the back of fairly uh, pedestrian growth in the world economy, and more importantly, the commodity slump and the slowdown in the emerging economies, we in South Africa are, of course, feeling the effect. We have an open economy. Uh, exports are a big part of our economic activity. And in as much as some of our major export partners, China, BRICS in general, Western Europe, are still, slowing, sl still showing sluggish growth, well, we too are following suit. The basic forecast is benign growth, slightly better than last year, no great shakes, nothing to get too excited about. And unfortunately, even these rather uninspiring growth rates might turn out to be a little bit optimistic because there are some very real risks to these expectations. Which brings us then 
to South Africa. Naturally, we know the basic story. We know that economic growth has disappointed over the last few quarters. So we've gone from being a 6% growth economy to being a 2% growth economy. Inflation is edging upwards. It's early days yet, but the last few months indicate an upward movement in inflation. Already this gives us an uncomfortable combination. But I think the point I want to make at this stage is the performance of the index of leading indicators indicates the economy is not quite sure where to go. It's not quite sure whether to improve or to move into further distress. So what's gone wrong? I think we know the answers. I've already mentioned the impact of the external environment. Obviously the drought, the worst in more than a century, is, is weighing heavily on the current economic performance. Just a quick note on the exchange rate, everyone's favorite or least favorite topic. Uh, I want you to look at the black line. That represents the value of the rand against a basket of 15 currencies, which in turn represent our major trading partners. If we go back to the beginning of this century, we find a very important and actually sometimes forgotten pattern. We find that within barely two years, the rand weakened by 41%. Within about three years, it strengthened by 54%. Uh, four or well, three and a half years later, it weakened again by 40%, up by 35, and currently so far down by 42%. We have become a capital hungry country. We have high and growing budget deficits and therefore rising government debt. We have current account deficits and therefore rising foreign debt. And I'm afraid households are not innocent either. Uh, until round about eight years ago, Household debt as a percentage of household income very rarely moved beyond, beyond 60%. But as you can see, from round right about 2003, 2004, that started moving upwards, reaching close to 86, 88%, just on the eve of the so-called Great Recession. So it's not only the government that is living beyond its means. It's not only the nation as an importer living beyond its means. It's also households. We're all living beyond our means, and hence, therefore, as you can see there, totally inadequate gross domestic savings. There's one more thing that I want to highlight, and that is, of course, labor markets in general and productivity concerns in particular. Well known, I'm not going to dwell upon labor market turbulence and strikes and all these well-known things. I'd rather actually focus on the, on the, on the second part, productivity. Economic growth of any country is determined by one or more of the following. How many natural resources do we have, as well as the quality of those natural resources? What do we do with them? How much labor do we have? And more importantly, how well skilled is that labor? How much capital do we have? And again, what's the quality of that capital? And how many entrepreneurs do we have? And once again, how good are those entrepreneurs? What contributes towards this very important total factor of productivity? It's innovation, the availability of skilled labor, the cost of R&D, the availability of technology, and how well you're using it. And also, the last point, the availability and ability of management. Management is crucial in harmonizing the other production factors. Without good management, we're not going to get total factor of productivity. So what I want to do is ask a couple of questions on behalf of potential investors. If I were to invest in South Africa, would that investment be well rewarded in the year and years that lie ahead? My answer would be influenced by the observation of sluggish growth in the country and low productivity. I'd also ask, will that investment be well treated? Is my investment safe? And I'd be looking at the rising debt burdens and wondering, are these debt burdens sustainable? The policy environment is looking, probably for many investors, rather uncertain. What's the outlook for 2016? And I'm going to confine myself to the mandate of this, of this conference, 2016. I've put together a very crude, let's call it policy index. It's a combination of fiscal policy, the budget balance, and monetary policy, the real prime rate, and other words, the prime rate minus the inflation rate. If I do a bit of very fanciful crystal ball gazing for the year, that this policy index is heading upwards. 
It's heading upwards, which not surprisingly suggests a tighter policy stance this year. I've also, and this is still, I, I, must, I must stress, this is a very crude little story here. For lack of a better word, I've called it a household distress index. PIT stands for the personal income tax burden. That probably distresses us. Naturally, rising food prices and rising transport prices and rising utility prices are probably also uh, prominent in influencing our level of distress. Along with that, uh, possible increases or the extent of increases in our real remuneration. So, here's my attempt at projecting for the next few quarters the household distress index. The red dotted line clearly moving upwards. Not as stressful as perhaps back in 2008, but heading there. But essentially, expect, don't be surprised. In fact, I'm almost tempted to say welcome a tight fiscal policy. Exchange rate, this, this, this statement could change tomorrow. But let's say at approximately current levels. We'll probably see it moving up and down. Uh, consumer spending will probably be sluggish as consumers do try to draw down their debt. I'm afraid job creation is highly unlikely during the course of this year. Are we going to be awarded, if you can call that an award, junk bond, sta junk bond status? That will compromise our ability to finance our deficits and make that financing so much more expensive. I think it's very important we should try to look beyond the current. It's difficult. It's real. But let's look beyond just the short term. Let's try to put on a more optimistic view of the medium to long term future. Let's not forget that this country is, after all, an upper middle income economy. We are amongst the 30 largest in the world. We are not a Mickey Mouse trivial economy. Do we have the ability to compete in the global economy? which is prone to crises. Will we be able to generate sufficient appropriate skills? And will we be able to exploit that so-called demographic dividend? Thank you. I think I've reached my time.